That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Explosive Pro Wrestling, School of Pro Wrestling's, oh, out of control. And right now we are, I am the Don Michael Morleone, sitting to my right is Casey Hansen. And we are now in the midst of an Invitational Tournament matchup, a qualifying match. Welcome, Don. Thank you for the introduction. Amazing to be here this evening. This match has started fast and furious. A 10-minute time limit in the 2024 Invitational Tournament. 10 wrestlers, two brackets, 25 matches, and the victor will receive an EPW title shot. Huge wow. clothesline from Chadwick Jackson. The power of Chadwick Jackson, he is an animal. He may not have the height requirement, but he has the strength and the style requirement. He is taking it to Elijah Henry at this point. And from the word go, he has been on point. Looks like he's going for the muscle buster. Not quite, not quite. Elijah Henry too quick and out of the way for that. It is leading out of the ring. Oh, dragon screw. That is going to do serious damage to the knee. That is going to slow Chadwick Jackson down. Now, this is bracket B of the Invitational Tournament, consisting of Elijah Henry and Chadwick Jackson in the ring. Huge drop kick to the knee of Chadwick Jackson, going to slow him down. Also in the group, Zenith and the Great George, who have one point each after their draw on the previous show. And Robbie Hart rounds out the five in block B. That's, it's just the beginning of the tournament. This is the fourth, I believe, match, third or fourth match in the whole tournament. And we are just beginning to see, oh, hard knife edge chops. Oh, Chadwick Jackson answers back forearm. Oh, running forearm from Chadwick Jackson. Elijah Henry with the boot, hooks him up for possibly a suplex. Cannot get the lift. Spinning, oh, massive forearm. Still standing, takes out the knee of Chadwick Jackson, brings him down to the floor. Elijah Henry smug, looking forward, to, oh, to the knee again. Looking smug and in control at this point. Now, Don, how does your strategy in a match change when you only have a 10 minute time limit as opposed to an unlimited time in a match? So you have no time to waste. You really want to, as it seems Elijah Henry is doing, is attack a body part so that they can no longer stand, they can no longer fight back. He's working that knee like a government mule. And two points will go to the winner of this match. So if there is a victor, they will go to the top of the table in the B bracket. It is early. A tie will leave four wrestlers on one point each. So it is important to get some points on the board early. That's right. And Elijah Henry is gunning for those two points. He has wisely taken his offense to the knees of Chadwick Jackson, trying to bring him down, trying to slow him down. Can't, taking away the power, because if he has no legs, he cannot lift and he cannot use that power. Absolutely, and at playing for keeps at the previous show on March 9th, Elijah Henry taking Ryan Rivers to the limit in the main event as well, a tremendous outing. He want to back it up and get those two points on the board. Huge chop to Chadwick Jackson. He is struggling in the early going. Can he mount some offense back? Oh, looks like he is. Oh, belly to belly overhead suplex. Again, the power of Chadwick Jackson being shown and uh, just throwing Elijah Henry over his head across the ring. Now has, seems to have taken control with a massive chop to the back. Elijah Henry having no, none of that, returning the chop off the ropes, both different directions. Oh, the pounce, sending Elijah Henry to the other side of the ring. Wow, my goodness. The pinning, two, oh, not quite enough. Elijah Henry digging deep. Nearly four minutes elapsed in this contest so far. Chadwick Jackson mounting some offense, looking very good here in the early going. It does seem to have taken its toll, all the attacks from Elijah Henry to the knee of Chadwick Jackson, but he is fighting through and using unique offense. He's, a, I've noticed, a very unorthodox competitor as well, Chadwick Jackson, a very wide array of moves and an unorthodox opponent to try and scout as well. That's it's it. Oh. Rough bottom. Uranagi. 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 That's it. They call it everywhere else a Uranagi. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chadwick Jackson on the pin, but is not quite good enough. Elijah Henry powered out of that one, trying to make sure that he still stays in this. Just a little over five minutes remaining in this Invitational Tournament qualifying match. But uh, we are seeing a side of Chadwick Jackson I think we've seen before normally is happy-go-lucky, but he is oh taking the offense with a nice chop to Elijah Henry. Lining up for possibly a German suplex. No, back, end, back elbow from Henry. Ducks the line, pushes off the ropes, catch. Oh, huge German suplex. 
landed hard on the shoulder and neck. Strong pinning predicament, but however, Chadwick Jackson is has kicked out. He is finding a source of power that that I don't think he, he possesses. He is digging deep. And Chadwick Jackson out here on his own, normally to be found with the rest of Dos Istwa, not out here this evening. No, uh, Chadwick Jackson taking this on himself, wants to prove that he is worthy of a title shot all by himself. Just wearing those forearms, sending one back. Elijah Henry instructing the crowd to be quiet. I imagine, oh. Huge headbutt, I would not be wasting any time. That was, ah, uh, you talk about strategy, that is not a good one. Chadwick Jackson throwing the headbutt. Two of the Asylum! Look at that. That knee still bothering Chadwick Jackson as well. It took everything he had to land that with his knees in the shape they are after the attacks from Elijah Henry. Two, oh, near four, almost three, not quite. Elijah Henry digging deep himself, trying to stay in this one. Now, Don, if you're in this tournament, would you be happy with one point and sharing the points? Or are you disappointed if you don't get the two points you in got this to, match? You've got to get two points in this match because you need to get that early lead so that later on you, you know who your opponents are. You need to stay ahead of it because if you only get one point, that's more points to make up if someone else gets two. Oh, running near in the corner. Powerful striking. Unbelievable forearm. Spinning forearm from oh, Elijah Huge Henry. Huge knee from Elijah Henry. This could be all. Oh, a kick out by Chad Chadwick Jackson. Jackson. I thought he was done. That's, it looked over to me. He is having none of that. He is not done, and he is letting everyone know. The crazy power. The knee pad comes down. Oh, he is hitting him without. Oh. To the point of the chin. Looking for another one. Five, five knees to the face. That has got to be it for Chadwick Jackson. And it is. And Elijah is it, Henry is three? takes two, three. three. Three, it was a three count. And Elijah Henry takes the lead in bracket B with two points. He is quickly out of here. He is here to make a statement to, to advance in the tournament with his points and to get out Chadwick Jackson. It was very close though. Everyone was quite confused. I think there was just two minutes left. Chadwick Jackson not believing, not believing he's done. Still having plenty left in the tank, he seems. He kicked out like it must have been a fraction of a second. Perhaps he thought, I agree with you, I think he thought he kicked out just in time, but the referee has counted to three. And when you've got five knees to the head. Calling out for his compatriots in Dos Itzwa. I think that is the five knees to the head from Elijah Henry. He must have been running on fumes. There is, there was nothing left of, of Chadwick Jackson in that match. He was literally, his body wanted to keep going and his mind wanted to keep going, but then it gave up. With the, would you say they were braids or cornrows? I'm not quite sure. I'd say they're braids. I think it's cornrows into, yes. into braids. Yep, nice. And the, so the chunky braids, the chunky cornrows. He has the ruffled pants with the flare at the bottom. And it looks like I'm doing the job of uh, our ring bell person, but I've got it locked. It's fine. We've got double duty tonight. Double so pay. That's it. I hope so. Yes, double, triple even. Um, but um, looking at here, I'm just, I'm prepared to see what happens with these guys. We'll either lock up here. Dan Moore, Dylan Black, Dan Moore, the veteran, taking control straight away with a with a wrist lock. Uh, Dylan Black searching for a way out. Uh, oh, does the spin, grabs the wrist, reverses it, takes control. Dan Moore proud, proud to see a uh, young trainee doing some work. Oh, but Dan Moore has an answer. Flips him over, flips him over again. Drop kick to the back. Dan Moore just showing all of his experience, able to counter Dylan Black's wrestling. Dylan Black probably going to be quite cautious after suffering a defeat at the previous show. Looking to take his time, not get caught out early. He is already lasted longer in this match than he did in his last match, so kudos to him. Drop down, tries to leapfrog, Dan Moore holds the ropes. Oh no! Pass by, drop down again. Does he go? 
No, too smart. Realises, oh! Huge clothesline to the outside, taking the large man, Dan Moore, outside. A much larger opponent. I think Dan Moore underestimated him. I, I will say, with all of the experience, he underestimated Dylan Black. But We're still yet to see. Here he comes, Buster Russ, for his first action in professional wrestling. And it looks like Aaron Hawk wants to get in as well. Aaron Hawk keen as mustard to get in there and show Buster Rust just what a Cobra. Okay, Dan Moore. Buster Rust, the heart will be pumping and pounding. He's taking on someone with many, many years experience. But if he could get the victory over someone like Dan Moore or Aaron Hawk, it will put him on the map early doors. Just 100%. like you on your first match. That's right. Will he have, he have the same luck? But Aaron Hawk not going for the uh, Coronado tie up as they did previously. Just taking control with those wild shots to the midsection. Aaron Hawk now whips to the other side. Oh, look at this. Very bit crafty. Of, bit of athleticism. Oh, shoulder charge to the gut. Slingshot over the top rope. Into a pin. Oh, just four by Buster Rust. Just a two. Aaron Hawk surprise. Checking with the ref. What, what was that count? I'm liking what I'm seeing so far from Buster Rust. And neck breaker. Aaron Hawk just too experienced. Buster Rust chaining a few moves together and countered by the very, very experienced Aaron Hawk who has now taken control, taken control of the hair. See, Mate. Aaron Hawk is the kind of guy who, he does, like, while he knows the rules, he knows them so well he will flaunt them to make sure that he stays in charge. And am I right to believe this is referee Christian Hayes in this match? Yes, this uh, tonight refereeing in uh, their brand new School of Pro Wrestling referee uniforms designed to not draw attention. Big elbow drop from Dan Moore to Buster Rust. Buster Rust possibly regretting becoming a professional wrestler at this point. It is absolutely not for the faint-hearted Don to step between these ropes. He is now wondering what he's signed up for with two very, very experienced competitors. Scoop and a slam down. Aaron Hawk taunting his teammate, just letting him know this is how things are done. Picture perfect knee drop. Aaron Hawk, I would think he should have gone for a cover there, but... He Instead, has decided to slap Dylan Black across the face. Slapping the taste out of his mouth. Dylan Black mad. He's trying to get Aaron Dan Hall. Moore to cheat. Look, he's, I don't know, I wouldn't call it cheating. I call it, you know, slightly bending the rules. But Dan Moore having none of it. There's bending the rules and there's just plain cheating. It's just plain cheating from Aaron Hawk wanting Dan Moore. I mean, listen, Aaron Hawk. Oh, just wants to have fun. I mean, is that not stretching the rules there, Dan Moore? Like, you wouldn't do it before, but now that it's uh, on your turn. Maybe Aaron Hawk has started to corrupt the nice guy, Dan Moore. Huge Ooh, suplex. Pitch a perfect suplex. The pinning predicament, Hulk, hooking the leg. Some perfect fundamental wrestling from Aaron Hawk. He's taking Buster Rust to school in his debut match. It's his very, very first match. Just He's just adjusting his collar, like uh, making sure that there's nothing obstructing his airway. I'm not sure about choking being in the rules. I know you have till five. Does he really need to choke somebody in their very first match? Well, I mean, he does have to five. He's just letting... Aaron Hawk is just letting Buster Russ know what he can expect at the uh, School of Professional Wrestling. The, at Out of Control, he's letting him know, this is your future. If you don't like it, do something about it. Dan Moore executing a perfect rear chin lock. Let's see what Buster Rust has in the tank. Can he get to his partner, Dylan Black? Can he fight out himself? Oh, throws a right and a left and another right. Oh, European Europe. uppercut. Boy has moves. Throws a clothesline. Dan Moore too quick, too smart. Throws him into the corner. Big up and over. Dan Moore catches. Oh, oh power, power slam. slam. Great determination from Buster Russ, kicking out of a massive power slam. He's digging very, very deep. I think he needs to get to his partner, Dylan Black, very, very quickly. See, Dan Moore is at least six foot three. That is six feet and three inches above the ground that Buster Russ was just thrown with power, a power slam. And now he's reaching for that tag, but... Aaron Hawk. Dan Moore Some arguing who's in. Miscommunication. Smart enough to lock him in so that he can't... They seem to both not be the legal man. Confusion. No one knows 
confusion all round as Buster Russ gets close to Dylan Black. I'm not going to lie, I don't know who the legal man is either. I don't know if the ref spotted the tag, the tag has been made. <laughs> Aaron Hawke wanting none of it, but ending up getting all of it. Dan Moore, oh, jumping, head Erica scissors. Marana. Look at that, the athleticism of Dylan Black, jawbreaker. Not sure where he is, to be honest, I'm sure. Buster Russ lining up for a poetry, well, poetry in clothesline. Uh, hooks him up, rolls him through. Buster Russ off the ropes. Big double leg Big drop. Big double leg drop indeed from Buster Russ. He's finding, he's digging very, very deep. I can see hair flying everywhere. This could be a huge upset. Aaron Just Hawk, a two count. Knowing exactly where he is, knowing that laying on his back is not where he needs to be. Kicks that shoulder up off the mat. If your mat is down for three seconds, that is it. Match is over. Spinning around for a cutter of some description. Aaron Hawk throwing a right hand to Buster Rust. Hooking up. Here we go. Roll the dice. That is it. That is on any normal human being. That is it. Game over. One, two, and Aaron Hawk, what are you doing? Aaron Hawke had the match won, has pulled Dylan's black shoulder off the mat. He wants to inflict more punishment. This could come back to cost Aaron Hawke and his partner Dan Moore, who I'm sure wants to get the victory as well. See, Aaron Hawke just seems like he's keen on just trying to make sure that there is a connection between them for this match, but it seems more like they lost the connection. Dylan Black. And that's the three count. What an upset. Buster Rust wins his debut match along with Dylan Black. I do not believe what I've just seen. Casey. And a miscommunication. I just, I, there is no way. That was the longest odds. And Dan Moore is applauding. What a nice guy. He is applauding yeah, look, the so victory of Dylan Black and Buster Rust. Buster Rust winning his debut match. Not many wrestlers can say they've done that. Dylan Black fighting back from a loss at playing for keeps. Dylan Black, I believe his first win in uh, in pro wrestling. He uh, managed to, I, I'm still flabbergasted. I'm still shocked at what I've just seen. There was no way that those two guys could have ever beaten Dan Moore and Aaron Hawke. And they just did. I'm, I, I, got no, I don't know what to say. Well, anything can happen when you come to ESPW. No matter how much you think somebody might be an underdog, they can surprise you and come out with the victory. So well done to Buster Rust and Dylan Black. <laughs> Referee Tyler Sparks calling for the bell, two men sizing each other up. Van Diemen has the height, but Axton definitely has a, a size advantage of a different kind. The broad shoulders, the thick chest. Dex Van Diemen pushing up against Axton. I mean, I would say Axton going at 130 kilos, close to 300 pounds. A huge individual. If you just stand next to him, he is an absolutely massive individual, along with Dex Van Diemen, who towers over everyone else that would be in the building tonight. So against just about all other competitors, both of these men, would just be throwing him around, picking him up. Again, like you said, Axton, 33 seconds. Uh, he, he defeated Dylan Black. Uh, we're going to see, this will be, I feel like this will be a war of attrition. No, it'll be a war of booty smacking uh, by the looks of Dex Van Diemen. So does this match favor a certain individual the longer it goes? See, this is where it gets difficult. It gets tricky. Side headlock uh, applied by Axton. Um, the younger man, Dex Van Diemen, may have the advantage over time. He's a little bit more, he's a little bit lighter, might have a little bit more energy. So that was a shoulder block. It shook the ring and it shook the building. Yes, yeah, that was, that was huge. These two men hear about just shaking the ring. Look at this, big giant leapfrog. Almost like a step over from the size of Dex Van Diemen, blocks the clothesline. Arm drag of sorts. Second arm drag. I think when you're six foot eight, you have to modify your arm drags. Getting the crowd behind him here, Dex Van Diemen. Spinning back kick. Applies the front headlock, looking like he's going for a suplex. I don't think the ring will be able to take it. Counter, huge back suplex into a backbreaker. That's what did for Dylan Black in the last event. Followed by a huge slam after that. 
just a one count, which absolutely astonishes me. This ring is struggling to hold these two men. Yeah, I mean, just these kind of moves on, as you say, much most other wrestlers, most other men are like life-threatening, life-threatening attacks. But because we have the strongest and the toughest at ESPW, Dex Van Diemen is hanging in there. Axton firmly in control at this point. Solid right hand to the midsection. Wants to take all the wind out, out of his opponent. If you can't breathe, you can't run, you can't administer your moves, you're going to get absolutely punished. And Axton is slowing the pace down. He looks absolutely in control. Dex Van Diemen looks in a lot of trouble at the moment. I feel like this is a position Dex Van Diemen is not in very often. I think this is a shock to the system. Whereas Axton, firmly in control at this point, is just, oh, going for that midsection again. Like you say, trying to take the wind, dropping an elbow on the back of the shoulders I across the agree. neck. I feel Axton is on autopilot. This is what he is used to, dominating his opponent. Dex Van Diemen at six foot eight, not used to being dominated and manhandled in this fashion. I don't think there'll be many people on the ESPW roster or the EPW roster that could manhandle someone the size of Dex Van Diemen, who suffers another backbreaker. Uh, adding insult to injury, put applying pressure with the elbow on the tricep. Oh, throwing the elbows to the midsection again. Pending predicament. Ah, kicks out. Dex Van Diemen still fighting. Dex Van Diemen digging very, very deep. What has he got left in the tank? He's been absolutely punished by Axton. He has been dominated by Axton over the last few minutes. Axton going to an eye rake. I'm not sure it's even necessary if someone of his size and stature. This is just Axton asserting dominance. I'm not sure any other wrestlers could eye rake Dex Van Diemen being De the height he is. He definitely hasn't come up against something like this before. And he is not taking it though. He is just hanging in there, not taking this offense, laying down, and, and Axon just slow, methodical, keeping up that same pace, but staying in control. Getting ready to charge in. Van Diemen just grabbing out of the boy. way. It's the first time Axon has been off his feet for a very long time in this matchup. The ring post shook when he hit the corner as well. Oh, kitchen sink reversed into another schoolboy. Dex Van Diemen in a position, he, I've said this several times, I know, but in a position he's never been before, he is on, he is just in He is using pinfalls that yeah. someone of his size would not normally need to use in a matchup. Going for a schoolboy kitchen sink roll up, huge lariat from Dex Van Diemen, that could be all, that was huge. Near fall. Axton having to dig very, very deep, and I think the longer this match goes, the harder it's going to be for both men to get back to their feet. They're used to dominating their opponents. They're used to being in control. And it has been match for match. Dex Van Diemen has been coming back on the offensive. What else has he got left? Hooking him up for a suplex. Can't quite get him off the ground. That's a... Axon is a lot of men to be throwing around. I fear for the ring if there is a suplex in this match or a huge slam. The ring could be in danger. This could be the end of the show. Massive forearm to Dex Van Diemen from Axton. Axton measuring, grabbing Van Diemen. I feel Axton himself hasn't often faced someone with such a height advantage. Oh, huge back, back elbow. Dex Van Diemen is not done yet. Although it seems that this match has taken its toll on him. It is an absolute war between these two behemoths. Here we go, the ring could be in danger. Huge suplex from Dex Van Diemen, that could be all. That is something you will not see happen often to Axon. I'm the not... shock of him being suplexed. Takes Surely. all the wind out of you being suplexed. Of a man that size, someone close to 300 pounds, absolutely shook the ring. Dex Van Diemen is thinking, what else do I need to do to put this man down? I mean, he, he lifted him up, all six foot eight of him, into the air, and that, from that height, it's more than your usual suplex. It is the, the speed and velocity coming down. Oh, picks him up. Oh, across the shoulders in the fireman's carry, but it's too much for too him. Too much damage. Huge back suplex. This could be all she wrote. And Dex Van Damon, how did he kick out of that manoeuvre? That did for Dylan Black. That was the end 
And this is a long way into this matchup, and Dex Van Diemen still had the fortitude to kick out. This is an absolute war between these two giant men. Dex Van Diemen digging deep. He has not been in a match, as far as I believe, this long, under this much pressure, and he is finding parts of himself that he didn't know existed. And it looks like now, Axton in control, positioning Dex Van Diemen up, grabbing through the leg. What? What manoeuvre is coming next? Van Diemen. I don't think he's been up on the ropes before. Looks Back like hit. unfamiliar territory. Solid shot to the lower back, which was troubling him earlier. Looks like this power bomb from the top rope this time. Running power bomb. Huge splat we, in the middle of the ring. We may Dex need Van to Diemen check. Down. We may need to check the integrity of the ring after that one. Axton has Elbows a lot taken down. out of him. He's struggling to make the cover. He does. Oh, Dex Van, Van Diemen. Diemen digging so deep. I don't know what more these two can do to each other. And if the rest of ESPW are watching from the back or watching this on YouTube, I don't think many wrestlers are going to be signing themselves up to face either one of these men after this performance. No, and what is this? Who is Bl Blake Wait. Walker? What is Blake Walker doing here? Blake Walker? He's, a, he's attacked Axon. What is, what is Blake Walker doing here? I don't... I don't understand. Massive choke that slam. Holy. He has choke slammed the 300 pound Axton and he's nearly gone through the ring. What is Blake not done. doing out here? He's not done. I thought he maybe had a problem with Axton, but now he's going after Van Diemen as well. And this man is also huge, Blake Walker. Picking up Van Diemen, the sidewalker. Uh, just planting Blake Van Walker Diemen. Walker looks to be at least six foot three and another close to 300 pounder here. He's he's an enormous man, and he has absolutely laid waste to both Axton and Dex Van Diemen. What is what is what is going on? What is what is Blake Walker doing here? Is like, it, what what is his intention? See, Blake it, Walker. Here's the important thing. Blake Walker is known for being a mercenary, a gun for hire. Is he is, wanting to be the number one big man in the SPW? That's it, is he, is he here as, as to make a statement for himself or is he here because someone has paid his way out there? So this match appears to have ended in a no contest with no winner, which is a little bit disappointing as it was a phenomenal performance from both Axton and Dex Van Diemen, Just, putting it all on the line. That's it, I mean, uh, like I said, Dex Van Diemen not being put to the test like this ever in his career, Axton, uh, just really showing his experience in taking control. Um, Dex Van Diemen, I mean, this, to be honest, this is a side of Dex Van Diemen I've never seen. I've only ever seen Dex Van Diemen arrogant uh, and, and just taking, you know what I mean? Taking everything out. He seems more more confident than I've ever seen him. I think he seems very focused as well. He's reinvented himself. He's keen to move up the ladder here in ESPW. Again, I have never seen Jordan Bishop so sure of himself. But uh, we're about to find out if he can back it up. That's, that's the important thing. Talk all the talk. But can you walk the walk? Confront Noah Green after his victory at the previous show and essentially told him he had his eye on him and uh, wanted to see what Noah Green has to offer as well. So now they have a chance in a number one contendership match, which is always high stakes. That's it, that's it. Uh, into the rear waist lock, now to the wrist lock. And I think Jordan Bishop does not want to drop the ball because who knows when you'll get another opportunity at a championship here in ESPW. That's it, Noah Green really looking to surge up the ranks of ESPW for that Pride Championship. It is all on the line, so number one contenders. Whoever wins this match gets a shot at uh, Ryan Rivers or Mr. Thompson. We're not sure. There's a Pride Championship match later tonight. So the winner of this match will face the winner of Mr. Thompson and Ryan Rivers at a future date. So very high stakes for these two men. Jordan Bishop scouting Noah Green here in the early going. Jordan Bishop playing the mind game, trying to get in the head of Noah Green. Noah Green 
not falling for it, taking control. And I think Jordan Bishop, more worried about the fans than Noah Green, which could be a mistake that could cost him. Although Jordan Bishop, a very accomplished technical wrestler as well, has been a student of the game for a very, very long time. Knows lots of holds and reversals. Will surprise you here in the ring if you haven't seen him wrestle before. That's true. And uh, Noah Green, though, no slouch. Moving out of that wrist hold, but he was caught again in the waist lock. Blocked. Waist lock blocked. Down into a roll up. One, two. All. Jordan Bishop kicks out. That was very close. Oh. Noah Green letting him know as well. Jordan Bishop is thinking, is my Pride Championship opportunity slipping away? Huge arm drag from Noah Green. He's in control in the early going. This is not what Jordan Bishop set out to do. Is it Noah Green really showing that he's ready for this? He's ready for this position, ready to become number one contender, but Jordan Bishop giving no, oh, giving no inches. Shoulder tackle. Jordan Bishop claiming it's his game. And you know what, at this point, it's looking like it may very well be. Noah Green, agile as ever. Passed by, hip toss blocked. Oh, ducks the clothesline. Fast and furious action, chop to the chest. Oh, Noah linking, Green, I've seen this before. The hands. We could be seeing one of his aerial moves, except he's just chopped him in the chest. Maintaining control. The oh, offering one more chop. Here it comes, light him up. Chop number three, really maintaining control. Bishop and now, can't defend himself. He's his one hand locked in, running the ropes. Twisting, rolling arm drag. Jordan Bishop into the corner. Off of the he is top in rope. big, big trouble. Noah Green's lining up Jordan Bishop. Huge running knee to the point of the chin. Hooks him up in a front face lock. Steps up, swings around. Suplex into a bridge. The neck muscles on Noah Green, bridging off of that. Oh, now he's calling for it. He's calling Noah for Green the top rope. Has some very unique and innovative offense. He's moving himself to the top. What is he gonna do from here? Spring from the top, Jordan Bishop has moved. Green rolls through. Bishop charges in with a huge kangaroo drop kick. And Noah Green goes flying into the corner. Bishop with a splash. Noah Green has had all the wind taken out of him. Cannonball from Jordan Bishop. He is showing his entire array of offense. He has been around the game for a long time. He has a vast repertoire of maneuvers he can use, and he hooks Noah Green for a two count. And see, Jordan Bishop taking control at this point, and, and his experience really has a lot to, play, to say for that. That's why he is now taking control. Noah Green uh, just reeling from that. Uh, barrage of offense from Jordan Bishop and Jordan Bishop just painting his face with right hands that's it a little kiss to the head tried to duck under Jordan Bishop putting in sledgehammer blows to the back and a huge DDT that folded Noah Green up this could be all from Jordan Bishop he has turned the game in his favor Noah Green in a lot of trouble on the mat Jordan Bishop mocking Noel Green. I'm not sure that's necessary at this point, but again, like I said, Jordan Bishop playing the mind games with, with Noel Green, trying to just take him off his game. And at this point, he's in control, but it may have had the reverse effect. Noel Green getting the elbow up, getting the boot up, trying to, to make a comeback against Jordan Bishop. Up and over. Rolling through, rolling through. Bishop's been caught. Just a two count. Kicking out Bishop, very experienced. Ooh. Massive boot to Noah Green who goes down. He seems to be targeting a lot of his offense at the head of Noah Green. The head and, and neck just really trying to wear him down. The Bishop, the vicious boot right in the face. Should have been enough, but but apparently was not. What is, what is Jordan Bishop going to have to do to put Noah Green away? And after the early onslaught by Noah Green, Jordan Bishop has stopped messing around. He's got focused. And he is all action on Noah Green. He's going for covers straight away. He's focused on winning this match, but Noah Green has countered. Bishop countering back. Huge suplex. That's He's enough. going for another cover. 
He's not wasting any time going into these pinning combinations. He's making Noah Green exert all of his energy and work really hard just to get back to his feet. And if Noah Green is on the mat, he can't be doing any of his aerial maneuvers to Jordan Bishop. So that could be Jordan Bishop's game right now to keep Noah Green grounded. That's, that would be a perfect game if you were trying to keep Noah Green grounded because once he gets up on that top rope, it is game over. For Jordan Bishop, but again, like I say, he's firmly in control. No, not confirm. <laughs> Wrong again. Noah Green just not saying quit. Just throwing Jordan right Bishop hands. Jordan Bishop has let Noah Green up. This could be a mistake from Jordan Bishop. Springboard. These are the over. aerial maneuvers we've talked about. Huge clothesline. Back elbow. Oh, Jordan Bishop just scouted. Kick to the midsection off the ropes. Roll monkey through in a flip. modified hurricane run, a monkey flip. Sometimes it doesn't matter how you get the job done, you just get it done, and he's got Jordan Bishop down and in the corner. Jordan Bishop looks What's in trouble. What's happening here? Oh, slingshot kick to the face. Some may call that... Uh, a some, Tiger Fane kick. That's it, yes. Through the second rope, roll through. A wow. Roll through, neck breaker. There's some very innovative offense. It flipping makes it neck hard breaker. To call That's it. There are some maneuvers I've never even seen before. That's it. Noah Green just pulling out all the stops. He's making his comeback after being just decimated by Jordan Bishop. Jordan Bishop had full control, but Jordan ne Bishop needed to keep Noah Green on the mat. Now he's on his feet. He's in a dangerous position, Jordan Bishop. Noah Green on the second rope. Springs up, slips down. And that could be all the damage done to him by Jordan Bishop. Oh, frog splash, but Jordan Bishop gets the knees up. Extra three or four seconds allowed Jordan Bishop to get the knees up in that situation. Again, like I said earlier, if he hits everything the way he wants to hit it, no green's kick unstoppable. To the back of the head. The base of the spine. Oh, that was very, very close. Referee Nick Green in the correct position, using his eyes seeing how close that was to a three count. That was so close, I thought the match was over. I thought that kick to the base of the skull from Jordan Bishop had Noah Green done. What is... Jordan Bishop going under the ring. Um, chair, no, see, in a number one contendership match, this is not gonna work, uh, Jordan Bishop. If Jordan Bishop gets disqualified, he will not be the number one contender. Referee Nick Green not having it, stopping it from becoming a disqualification. Wanting this match to go to a proper finish. Terrific job from referee Nick Green there. He's getting rid of the chair out of the ring. We don't need any, any outside. Hold on. Jordan Bishop has broken a pull cue across the back of Noah Green. It has snapped in half. I'm, I'm speechless. And Jordan Bishop is your number one contender for the ESPW Pride Championship. The pull cue did the damage. The face buster finished Green off. That's it, lads. And it is game over for Noah Green. This this whole out of control is... is Have so you seen the back of Noah Green? Sorry to interrupt you. Look at Noah Green's back. There is a huge red mark sliced across his back. Of course, he from just Jordan got, Bishop. He just got hit with a pull cue, but the referees didn't see it. Didn't see it. He's like, look at my back, look at the damage, but And Noah Green has been sunk. He's completely sunk. People are getting photos of Noah Green's back. It is absolutely sliced open from that pull cue shot. And Jordan Bishop is now your number one contender for the ESPW Pride Championship. And he, he he's now going to move on to to have a, a shot at the Pride Championship. Um, Noel Green, not happy with the outcome, cheated out of that match. Jordan Bishop has backed up what he said he was going to do, which was become number one contender. He's got a new attitude. He has become victorious in this match and will face Ryan Rivers or Mr. Thompson. At a later date. At a later date. I gotta say this this show out of control is living up to its name. There's just been so much happen in, in the first half of this show. Jordan Bishop is now your number one contender for the Pride Championship. Buster Rust and Dylan Black beat veterans of of Dan Moore and AZ Vergara. We saw 
uh, Dex Van Diemen versus Axton, a ring shattering war. match. And and uh, Blake Walker comes out and takes out both men. And and two uh, the Invitational and match. And Elijah Henry got two points in bracket B of the Invitational I Tournament. I wouldn't have called that because the experience has to go to Chadwick Jackson. Experience of kicks like there's been a lot tonight of experience versus inexperience, and that's what these ESPW shows are all about. We have already seen one upset earlier in the evening, and now this is Harry's opportunity to take on the 2023 Invitational Champ Radmaker Kingston. And Harry is coming off a very, very good victory against his brother Tommy Ducks at the previous show. Can he continue that momentum against Kingston? Or will Kingston have his measure by way of experience? Side headlock, opening this matchup. Kingston has a lot of speed, so does Harry. Oh, reversing the hip toss into... Oh, into a pin. One count, pass by from Harry. Pushes up for the back body. Oh, caught, rolled up into a pin again. One, two. That could be the first time I've ever seen a backdrop counted into a sunset flip from Kingston. A very fast paced start here for this matchup between Kingston and Harry Don. Lovely show of respect between uh, two individuals here. Kingston loving the fighting spirit of Harry and Harry just happy to be here, I think. I think um, Harry picking up some experience in Japan as well, wanting to incorporate that into his wrestling style, some more Curacao type wrestling. Can he counter Kingston's technical wrestling? Kingston, a very speedy wrestler, but also technical as well. He is Ooh. the complete package, being the 2023 into inter Invitational Champion. Arm drag by Kingston. Ducks the line, Harry. Brings his own arm drag. Again, Harry just using his speed. Oh, the switch this time. Kingston hits the arm drag. Showing respect again. To young Harry, just you know, take him to his paces, letting him know that uh, you know what, you might be quick, I'm just as quick, and I have the experience. Both men now getting the crowd behind the match. Kingston really just showing Harry, taking him to school, but also learning himself. Oh, ducks, coming out of the tie up, kick to the midsection. <laughs> Kingston shaking his head, showing a bit more respect, but that. Solid forearm. Kingston off the ropes. Harry meets him. Bam! Another forearm. And Kingston indeed will have one eye on the EPW Championship situation as well as is currently vacant. But he is the 2023 Invitational Champion. So watch this space from Radmaker Kingston. That's it, 100%. He's here helping out the young. Oh! That is a huge drop kick to the face. It was almost a kangaroo drop kick. The That's heels it. Heels touched Harry's chin. That's it, and Kingston knowing just how good that drop kick is. Hitting the pose, giving everyone what they wanted. Taking the pin to Harry, not quite done yet. I mean, he's just, you know, face, nose rearranged, but still not quite done yet. Kingston in firm control right now. He's definitely in control, but he does not want to take Harry for granted, even though he slammed him with a massive body slam. It only takes three seconds to cause another up upset here at ESPW. That's it, Kingston building up the fans, ready for a... A slingshot tope into the ring. Seen that before from Kingston. Kingston what, has, has he... done that move for a very, very long time, a very experienced wrestler. Harry's gonna have to bring his absolute best here. Kingston in complete control. But Harry still staying up, staying in it. Kingston setting up for a suplex. Oh, it's nice. a cradle. I noticed Harry hooked his legs as well to create some extra torque on the manoeuvre. Northern, Northern suplex. Lights. Oh, Northern Light suplex, indeed. Hooks him up for a fisherman suplex, the one you were gunning for. It's too early. It's too early, but Kingston nailing it with the bridge. And Harry just not, not ready to give up yet. Kingston not sure what he's going to have to do. He's, maybe he's got the key gloves on for, um, for Harry and not taking it to that next level, but maybe he needs to. Maybe Harry's got that dog in him and uh, he, Kingston might need to take it to the next level. 
And for Redmaker, Kingston as well, used to facing opponents that he's quite familiar with, that he will know a lot about. And with Harry, he doesn't know a lot about Harry. What is Harry going to bring to the table? He dug very, very deep against his brother, Tommy Ducks, at the last show and managed to get the victory. Can he get a victory against the Radmaker Kingston? Slips out the back of that screw slam, off the ropes, goes again. Oh! A version of a Michinoku driver. Nailed it. Harry taking control. This young man is in a position he's never been in before. He's picked that up from Japan. That's it, he 100% has picked that up from Japan. If he can pin the Invitational, uh, Invitational Tournament winner from 2023, his year is set. Harry nailing those back elbows, charges in, driving the hip into the chest, into the solar plexus, taking the wind out of Kingston, up, oh, single leg. Kingston has no face. idea where he is, he looks out. That was so close, that is the closest. Very, very late Harry kick out from been. Kingston. He looks dazed and confused to me. If you look at Kingston's face, his eyes are rolling in his head. He does not look like he knows where he is. Harry has rattled Kingston here. It could be moments away from a huge upset. Harry not, not being in a position he thought he would be in. Not quite sure what to do next. Charges the corner. Kingston scouts it out of the way. You're right, took a couple here of seconds comes. too long. Springboard drop kick right to the face. A shotgun springboard drop kick from Kingston. That caught Harry hard and fast. Kingston is not happy. He's ready to finish this match off. Running European in the corner. Another running European uppercut. He's prepared for Harry. Is it time to finish the job? Jumping neck breaker. And Kingston's face has got a lot more serious. Again, I think he had the kick gloves on early and now he's turning up the heat, turning it up a notch. He's now thinking, what do I need to do to put this youngster away? I don't think Kingston was, ex Radmaker Kingston was expecting this kind of resistance from Harry. I mean, he, he gave him props for his early work, but I think it's calling for it. The Radmaker hooks him up, comes through, oh, swings the knee. Roll through from Harry. Yes. So close to the three count. Harry bringing his A-game, another roll-up. Desperation from Harry, just trying to get this match over and done with before he's finished off. Goes for Kingston, club to the back. That's it, he's firing up. Charges in, goes for the knee again. Kingston scouts it, puts him on the ground. And Kingston felt it once, he didn't want to feel it again. It rattled him. Big knee to the face from Kingston. Dragon oh. suplex. Finding its mark. Harry back to his feet though. I think he's on dream state. Sunset Bomb finishes the job. Alex Kingston, as expected, won the match. But Harry had him in moments of doubt. We have seen just what young Harry is capable of. And I think Kingston as well, surprised by what he saw. Even though Harry didn't get the job done, I think his status has been elevated here in ESPW after that performance against one of the very, very best in Radmaker Kingston. That was a terrific performance from both wrestlers. That's it. Uh, starting, starting this year off with a win, but not winning through. Kingston showing respect, telling young Harry, kid, you might have what it takes. and he, he maybe is a change of attitude. We'll wait and see. Like, this is all brand new revelations. So this is our second 2024 Invitational Tournament match of the evening. This is the A bracket 10 minute time limit. So these two competitors will need to go all out. Felix Young defeating CJL to have two points in the tournament. Dustin Connors, this is his first match. And also in the group. Partners, CJL and Tyler Jacobs. A little war of words. Clearly, Felix Young has the ear of the crowd. Dustin Connors barking up the wrong tree. See, it's interesting. The last invitational match we saw, they were straight into it. They were there gunning for more points. Felix Young already having two points. Well, one is minute. in no rush. 
has elapsed already. So if Felix Young were to win this match, he would be out in the lead on four points. James Hartness has two points via defeating Tyler Jacobs. And if Dustin Connors were to get the victory, it would be split three ways between Felix, Dustin and Hartness, although Dustin would just have one match. So a lot of permutations in every single match in this tournament. That is why I like this tournament format. You have to be on your A game. Huge chop from Felix Young. Felix Young lighting up young Dustin Connors on the outside. I think there may be some regrets going through the mind of Dustin Connors, especially after lighting that chop up. Tried to return serve, but it was not effective. Felix Young just taking complete control. Danger territory. Oh, too smart. Too Very smart. Very clever indeed. And these matches are going to move quickly. Just eight minutes remaining, which is not a long time. I'm just watching and I'm feeling a little bit anxious about the time running out. Yes, These 100%. two competitors need to get a move on. Dustin Connors taking control, charging Felix Young into the side of the ring and then a backdrop straight on the hardest part of the ring. Definitely, because the, the edge of the ring is metal. It is a metal frame of the ring. So he has been back dropped onto metal and Felix Young now looks in a lot of trouble. However, you will notice Dustin Connors just taking a little too long and Felix Young recovering just enough to get back to his feet. And here it is, the hard way in. Dustin Connors just not not being on point. He's Slim letting it go to his head. him into the ring. Combination from Felix Young, a very, very experienced competitor. 14 years of experience. Bionic elbow puts Dustin on his back. He's Felix Young firmly in control and just loving this. Looking to move deep into this tournament. And uh, looking for an EPW championship opportunity. Cannon Connors has other ideas. Oh, it's Dustin Connors. Dustin Connors working that, working that lower back from the start into the side of the ring. A backdrop onto the apron, then forearm to the back, and then a backbreaker. Felix Young gives him a, a quick right hand to let him know he's not done. Dustin Connors putting his foot straight into his face. Strong European uppercut. Here comes your forearm again, taking Felix Young straight off his feet. Felix Young with huge crowd support here tonight. They're really getting behind Felix Young, not enjoying the antics and the tactics of Dustin Connors. Dustin Connors lighting up Felix Young with a chop. Felix Young reverses up and over from Dustin Connors, back straight into the lower spine. Just really concentrating his efforts to make sure, well, to be honest, that Felix Young can't lift him. He's been working on the lower back since he back suplexed him on the apron, continuing to work on the lower back of Felix Young. Trying to build up some head of steam, looking like going for the spear, scouted by Felix Young, throws the right, oh, hung up on the ropes. Felix Young on the back foot, Dustin Connors taking control, but again distracted by the fans. And although the fans are giving him a hard time, Dustin Connors looking like a terrific athlete as well, looking very accomplished in the ring. Will the fans distract him? He's making his way to the top rope, high risk decision, and it has not paid off. Felix Young on point. Lots of very hard chops from Felix Young. A Connors' chest took his face off has turned bright red, going into very dangerous territory up on the top right. Five minutes have elapsed. There are just five minutes remaining in this Half, matchup. Halfway through, and uh, whatever happens on the top rope here could be the deciding factor of this match. Felix Young has him up, picks him up. Massive superplex to the middle of the ring from the top rope. My goodness, any man broke it would be broken in half from that match. I've worn that myself several times. It knocks all of the wind from your body, Casey. It leaves you with no wind, nothing. You but cannot Felix breathe. Felix Young has also damaged his lower back further. It has been injured earlier in the match. He's struggling to get to his feet. Both men are down. What a manoeuvre, though, by Felix Young. Both struggling to their feet. Now it's looking like, yes, trade-off of forearms. Just serve and return serve now. I'm not sure I would want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Felix Young in a chop-off. I have, it's not fun. A punch-off. Forearms again, lighting up. 
is Dustin a brawler, Connors. a brawler through and through. Hard, hard hitting, glancing blow right on the ear, which definitely hurts a lot, can disorientate you. Can really set off your center of balance. Felix Young not having any of it, dropping him with a back elbow on a forearm, sending him into the ropes. Connors grabs it, kicks him in the chest. This time limit really adds a big dimension. Oh, goes for his finish. Doesn't make it. Another it's dragon suplex. Dragon suplex just dropping you on the base I've of the spine. Seen one earlier tonight. Charges off the ropes. Massive! Lariat. Massive Lariat. From Felix Young. But we know in three minutes we are going to get a decision one way or another. We're going to get a victor or it will be a draw. This match only has three minutes remaining. It really adds a new dynamic to these matches. The tension it is all is, action. The tension is high. These guys have, like I say, three minutes. Anything can happen in three minutes and they need to finish this very soon. Otherwise, they are walking away with no points and at the bottom of the ladder, throwing those elbows, Dustin Connors, knowing how urgent this is, almost taking out the ref. Felix Young checking on the ref, turns around. Oh, that, that is a dirty, low blow dirty. From Connors. I've done some dodgy things in my time, but that was next level. Dustin Connors. Felix Young is in a very, very bad way. Hunched over on the mat, needing to use the ropes just to get back to his feet. That is not fun getting him below the belt. Connors is sizing him up. He has two minutes, 20 remaining. Charges in. Oh, spear. Is that enough though? Is that enough to take down Felix Young? And it is. And it's Two over. Points. Dustin Connors in his very first match. He goes one and one. Well, he goes one and oh. Two points on the board. One win, one match. Felix Young. He has two points from two matches. That's the importance of these matches. At any time, you can be at the front of the, the queue and then to right back in the middle with everyone else. Dustin Connors adding insult to injury. But Dustin Connors, two points. Felix Young, two points. James Hartness, two points. CJ Allen, Tyler Jacobs yet to get off the mark, but just the one match each for those two. Dustin Connors celebrating. TMDK, I'm sure, would be impressed on by and his performance tonight. You never know. Those guys, they're, with their standards, you just don't know. You'd think possibly he's made an impact this evening. see that yes daddy germ and the retrogrades uh, coming up against Riley Parker, Manuka Toa and Harley Hyde. This looks like a very very exciting and interesting trios tag as well. Manu looks to be an absolute unit in the ring. His shoulders are blocking out half the ring from my viewpoint and he has scared Papa Germ right out of his braids. Papa Germ needs a second to take a breath. He got going for the handshake, trying to make sure that Manu is on side with him. You know, a fair contest. Manu's not having it. Manu looks oh, like he Papa has... Papa Germ. God damn, Papa Germ. With the strut. With the strut. No. Nope. Manu not having it. Getting him up on his shoulders. Big press and drop. Showing huge, off the sheer power that Manu possesses. Now, Manu doesn't look like he's had a day of fun in his entire life. Papa Germ looks like he's had fun every single day of his life as Riley Parker gets into the ring here with Lizzie Maximus. Lizzie Maximus, haven't seen her at the School of Professional Wrestling for, for a little bit. She went over to England, did a bit of training to really sharpen up her skills. And uh, I'm excited to see what she brings to the table. Riley Parker, I never care what he brings to the table because it's always, always just self just, I don't know, I, I, did, I, I don't have the non-swear words to say what he brings to the table. It looked like Riley Parker was very keen to get in the ring once Papa Germ was out of the ring. In true Riley Parker style, trying to take the easy route, thinking that what he does is amazing. Thinking a wrist lock may get the job done. He's been put in his own wrist lock. Lizzie Maximus taking back control, using her wily and skills to take control and take over from Riley Parker. Holding on, Riley Parker fighting his way out, manages to get through. And what is this? What is this? This looks like a carrying over the threshold moment. Trying to show off 
maybe some squats, maybe some bicep curls, but it has backfired. It's backfired for a zero count. You don't see that very often as Stella Nix tags herself in. Going for tag, no, Stella Nix moving forward. Looked like some miscommunication there between Nix and Lizzie Maximus. Looked like a double back elbow. But Nix went in early on her own. Terrific flexibility into the double knees and that has to absolutely take all the wind out of you. Both knees into the solar plexus. Definitely gonna take all the wind out of you no matter who you are. I don't think Harley Hyde would be impressed if this match was over before she even got in the ring. Now she enters the 2023 Rookie of the Year. Yes, as voted by the fans. Which she wore that medal to the ring, very proud, and defeated Stella Nix at the last show here at the ESPW School of Pro Wrestling. But so then, was it went the other way at the um, Collision Course pre-show, where Stella Nix managed to win over Harley Hyde, and a beautiful head scissors. So we could get the decider right here tonight. Tags, Papa Germ back tags into in the Papa ring. Germ. Boot to the back. Papa Germ off the rope sliding oh, kick. That was absolutely amazing. Papa Germ with some unique offense. Yes, he is, uh, he is uh, definitely the kind of guy you would not expect to be a very good hold for hold wrestler. But we saw him in the pen against Holman Blackwell recently. So we know he has the chops to make it in the School of Pro Wrestling. And I'm not surprised he was up for the pen. He does look up for anything, Papa Jim. Double back elbow. Papa Jim posing for everyone. Front face lock, trying to decide which way to go, how she's gonna take out, oh, Harley Hyde swings a big right hand. Glances the midsection around to the spine, oh, forearm straight to the face. Drops Lizzie Maximus to a knee. Harley Hyde firmly in control. Oh, the reversal throws into the ropes. Very smart from Harley Hyde because she pushed Lizzie away from her corner. She switched it around in a traditional match. She could go any way, but she pushed it towards her own corner. Riley Parker making the save. Manu. Oh, headbutt. Enormous headbutt from Manu behind the referee's back. He was the illegal man. The fans are not happy with Manu. Lizzie Maximus has been put down and she may be out with that huge headbutt. Her brains could be absolutely scrambled. Oh, capture face buster from Harley Hyde. Papa Germ down, trying to encourage Now Don, I have been partner. impressed with the unique maneuvers that I've seen tonight. So many absolutely amazing moves from the ESPW superstars. That just is a shining testament to the School of Pro Wrestling. Letting these people shine and showing them the way forward. Riley Parker tagged in. So if you are watching control. ESPW or if you come down to a show, you're going to see things that you've never seen before in pro wrestling, including Riley Parker dance around. Like an idiot, because he's an idiot. Tag so he came Manu. in dance and then tagged in the ever so serious Manu. They're a real chalk and cheese team. Massive right hand from Manu. It could be over. It could absolutely That's be it. over. Oh. Lizzie, Lizzie Maximus. Maximus throwing forearms. They seem to be moving him, but not affecting him. Manu throws it to the corner. Looks to his corner to, to wonder. Hands off. Hands off to Harley Hyde. It looks like they may be going for some sort of tag team maneuver. No, Maximus pulls the rope. Manu goes out. Lizzie Maximus drops the jawbreaker, fighting from underneath, trying to find out where her tag corner is. Papa Jem is reaching out for the tag. He's holding the tag rope. He's as far as he can get. Riley Parker goes to the outside. Papa Jem's hand is outstretched. Lizzie Maximus just brain scrambled from that headbutt earlier. Still trying to figure out where she is. Big kick, turns around, goes for the tag. Will she make it? No. I think she went for a tag and Manu and Riley Parker pulled Papa Germ and Stella Nix off the apron. So Lizzie Maximus had nobody to tag. The hands were there, they got pulled out of the way and now Lizzie Maximus is all on her own against Harley Hyde. Referee Tyler Sparks needs to remain in control of this. Very smart from Harley Hyde, uh, whipping Lizzie Maximus over to the corner. 
Lizzie Maximus has nowhere to go. She needs to get out of the corner and quickly. Riley Parker just it's showboating, trying to talk smack. And there is no one in Lizzie Maximus's corner. Even if she gets over to her corner, there is no one there as Papa Germ is trying to crawl up from the floor. Lizzie Maximus throws a few hard elbows trying to get over to her team. Swings through into a DDT. Just determined to get to a corner. Riley Parker is not moving. Papa Germ is on the apron waiting. He tags Tag himself made. in. Papa Germ in against Harley Hyde. Up and over. Drops Riley Parker with a solid clothesline. European uppercut to Manu. Harley Hyde hits the corner. This is just pandemonium running European, jumping European. That hit Riley Papa Parker Jim right on the jaw. It's just a house on fire. This is amazing. Got the Bulldog drop kick. Bam, lands it. Papa, Papa Jim Jim. is a one man wrecking crew. He could get the job done here against Harley Hyde. Manu but having none of it. He is just chomping at the bit, getting his hands. He is one angry man. Drags Harley Hyde back to the corner to make the tag. Very smart wrestling from Mano. He wants in and he wants in right now on Papa Germ. Throws the headbutt. Manu taking control. Question of who is in control right now. I think someone did need to take control on that team. Riley Parker's definitely not on control. Stellanix jumping cross body takes out Hyde and Parker. Manu still in control of Papa Germ. Picks up Stellanix. There is action everywhere. I'm not sure who the legal people are anymore. Double super kick. Oh, flatliner from Harley Hyde. They got the job done on the last show. Kick to the gut. Oh! Gunner, cutter. Twist All of, of the above. fate. Riley Parker comes in, running knee. Just A massive about knee. Destroys the jaw of, oh, jumping, neck breaker. Oh, this is just too much going on right now. Manu in control. Oh, fireman's buster. And it's over. Manu took control of his team and scored the victory for his trios. Your winners, Manu, Riley Parker and Harley Hyde. Manu, very, very impressive in this match. Five of the six people in that match. <laughs> Manu, terrific. Harley Hyde doing a good job for her team. Riley Parker, I'm not really sure what he did. And even though they didn't get the job done, Papa Germ, great showing. Miscommunications. Miscommunications between the retrogrades. They're not looking like they're having a good time right now. Wait, hold on. Back on the same page, still at Stella Nixon, and Lizzie Maximus. The retrogrades in the ring. What's this? Oh my Speed goodness. Big kick from Stella Nix. What was that for? Some miscommunication in the match. And it seems like loss after loss has caused Stella Nix to break. Wow, this is this is a revelation. Retrogrades, one of one of the fan favorite tag teams. Is this it? Is this over now? Are we seeing the end of the retrogrades? Is this Stella the final Nicks. match? So could that be the last time we saw the retrogrades together? With the events unfolding this evening, this show, Out of Control, has been out of control. And we have one amazing match left to go for the Pride Championship. I believe Mr. Thompson was stripped of the Rising Star Cup at the previous show by Tyler Jacobs. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Tyler Jacobs, having uh, started the, the, the FN Carnage Rising Star Cup, 
as a means for elevation of young, hungry, uh, hard-working school of pro wrestling wrestlers is shocked and appalled at the way Mr. Thompson has handled himself and has since stripped him of it. Mr. Thompson has attacked Ryan Rivers. That is before the bell has sounded. So this is not a disqualification. This is perfectly legal. Smart from Mr. Thompson. The bell has referee, not sounded. Is, this match has not started. What is the referee going to do here? He's going to have to ask Ryan Rivers if he wants to if he wants to start the match. He's called. Has the ref called for the he bell? Is that Mr. The Thompson? Bell. Mr. Thompson. Will Ryan Rivers? The match this is now official. Mr. Thompson goes on the offensive early. He's still carrying the Rising Star Cup at ringside, even though he has been stripped of it. The big balls of the big boy may be his undoing. He has taken this on. Oh, and it looks like he is ready to fight. He's fighting his way back. I thought this may have been the shortest main event in ESPW history, but the fight in Ryan Rivers, even though he's back, is troubling him. He, has been, he was attacked with the whiteboard in the lower back from Mr. Thompson, but the big boy is, is too strong. He is going to fight his way back. Mr. Thompson going to the second rope. Is it a mistake? Yes, it is. I think that was a big mistake, turning his back on Ryan Rivers. Ryan Rivers capturing him in a back suplex position. What does he do? Drops him, drops him hard to the mat. Showing Mr. Thompson that he is not here to mess with spiders. Although clever strategy from Mr. Thompson as he immediately rolled towards the rope to avoid a pin. But Ryan Rivers is in control. An interference from the Locker Leadership Program. Rogan Cargis grabbing the foot. The referee not catching it, but definitely admonishing him. Thompson taking control. Backbreaker focusing again on the back. Just smart strategy. I mean, like I said, he is ready to twist the rules, bend the rules, break the rules, as long as it serves a purpose, and that purpose is to win the Pride Championship. I think Mr. Thompson will do anything and everything to become ESPW Pride Champion this evening. Putting increasing pressure on that back, Ryan Rivers fighting out, throwing a right hand, still feel, reeling from, from those shots to the back. It is a worry for Ryan Rivers if that back is troubling him this early into the matchup. But Mr. Thompson is just going to continue to target the back. And the longer this match goes, the more Ryan Rivers looks to be in trouble. Thompson cannot believe the kick out. Looking at the referee with astonishment, just saying, well, mate, where, where is your count? But that count was fair, the count was clear. Ryan Rivers found it in himself to kick out, even with all of his back issues at this point. Uh, like I say, the, his heart is deeper than the deepest well. And he brushes off, kicks to the midsection, shot to the back, European uppercut, double hand overhand chops, but with the shirt on, no seems as ineffective. Effect. But not ineffective for a forearm. There is no shirt on the face. Rivers calling for the wipeout, not able to connect. Thompson reversing up, face buster. Dropped his face straight on his knee. What a unique maneuver. Double underhook face buster, I think that's what you'd call it. Now, early in the evening, Jordan Bishop was victorious to become the number one contender to the prior championship. So he will face the winner of this match of Ryan Rivers and Mr. Thompson at a later date. So I'm sure he'll be watching on scouting these two potential opponents. You'd be a fool if you weren't watching this, so you can know exactly what Ryan Rivers or Mr. Thompson will do when you face off against them. And as you can see, Thompson, like, like I said earlier, just taking every advantage, taking every shortcut. Ryan Rivers just fighting, fighting hard. If he's against Ryan Rivers, he has a fight on his hands. If he's against Mr. Thompson, you know that he will have to watch his back just working further on that back. Normally you would see the beep test on the, on the front and on the chest and in the face. 
but he is working that back. He is really attacking the He's back. modified the beat test. And putting Ryan Rivers through his paces this evening. Thompson whips. Impacting that back, that spine again. Spine connecting to every part of your body. Shutting down for Ryan Rivers. Thompson. Mr. Thompson is looking very, very focused on the job and another elevated flatliner. Two and a half on that count. Now these guys are not on a time limit. So this match could go all night. Fans having none of it from Mr. Thompson telling him he cannot get the job done. He has tried. So far, he hasn't got the job done, but this match is not finished. Picking up Ryan Rivers for a suplex. Not quite making it. Ryan Rivers firing back. Mr. Thompson having none of it. Just remaining in control. Hooking him back up for that suplex. Lifts up Rivers. Drops him. Low oh. center of gravity from Rivers. Very hard to muscle over in a suplex. Wasn't able to get him over, but dropped onto the apron. Misses the forearm straight back to that spine. Ryan Rivers is in intense pain. I have had back issues in my life before, and it can cripple you. Nobody, if someone is targeting it, that's even worse. Nobody likes a sore back and are being targeted time after time again. Must be agony. Exploder suplex on the stage that now, echoed throughout Mr. the ESPW Thompson. arena. Now I think Mr. Thompson has back issues. Bad idea for Ryan Rivers, though. He may Throwing have hurt his own back. May have caused further damage, but I dare say Mr. Thompson not able to move after that one. Referee Christian Hayes checking on, on both men. Checking to see if they can continue. Ryan Rivers looks in a lot of pain on the ramp. A lot of pain. Unable to get air in. You can hear that noise. Is the air leaving his body but not returning? And the referee using his discretion here. We do not want this match ending in a double count out. It is a title match. We need to have a victor in the ring. He's had enough now. And if both men can't continue, this may be the end of this matchup. They have to the count of 10 to make it back into the ring. Ryan Rivers is on the floor on the side of the stage in a very, very bad way. Mr. Thompson hasn't moved either. Referee Christian Hayes at five, now six. There is limited time left. I mean, you, this, this actually does not work in Thompson's favor. Oh, just before the 10. River's still in it. So close to being counted out. That uh, I've taken, I've taken moves on that staging myself, and it is a brutal, brutal hit to take. These men are really digging deep to even be able to work their way back up to their feet at this point. So both men with sore backs at this point. Mr. Thompson looking very, very focused on the task at hand. Ryan Rivers fighting back, giving it everything. He's got deep reserves. He has been absolutely punished by Mr. Thompson. And he keeps firing back with forearm after firearm. He's asking for more. He's absorbing the clothesline. At the this, clothesline at this point, both of these men have to dig deep to throw these, these clotheslines. Oh, Mr. Thompson just meets him at the ropes. Just moving at this point is agony. Flying back elbow from Ryan Rivers, exposing the elbow, taking off the elbow pad, hoping to inflict further damage. Thompson ducks, both men hit with a clothesline, both in a pinning predicament, both men kicking out. I don't know how you would have officiated that. Both men flat on their backs with the shoulders down, but who knows what's happening here right now. These. These guys, this is Pandora. This is out of control. This is out of control. This is absolutely out of control, Don. It could have been a double pin. One person could have kicked out. Anything can happen here at ESPW. If Mr. You, Thompson is firmly in control of this matchup. Up in the fireman's carry. Oh, palm strike directly under the chin. But Ryan Rivers keeps fighting back and fighting back and fighting back. His back goes out again. Looking for his finishing maneuver, the wipeout. 
What, what, is, what can Ryan Rivers do at this point? His back is just not helping him. Mr. Thompson. Oh, my goodness. Huge Boston Crab from Mr. Thompson. Very, very smart strategy. Deep hooked under the knees from Mr. Thompson. A very deep squat indeed, putting even more pressure on Rivers' back. The more he moves, the more pressure. Ryan Rivers must be in intense pain right now. And Rogan Cargis, what is happening? He's pulling the ropes away from Ryan Rivers. He's sitting deep, deep into this Boston Crab. That I have fairly done. Fairly done. I, I have on, look to in say... The ring, look in the ring. Oh, it's in the ring. He's got the Rising Star Cup. Is this distraction? Mr. Thompson has got the Rising Star Cup. He's been spotted by Christian Hayes. Christian Hayes all over this. Get out of here, Cargus. Cargus has been ejected from the ringside area. Might get his manager's and license fans, revoked. Fans telling him to get inside out. Inside cradle, inside cradle. Oh, a double leg takeover. He's looking okay. for that Boston Crab again. Oh, my goodness. An even deeper squat this time. Ryan Rivers, just tap out. Save your spine. If you want to walk again, just tap out, Ryan Rivers. It is not worth it. He is in the center of the ring. Ryan Rivers has nowhere to How? go. No, he's he is not. He's nowhere near the ropes. Powering up, fighting through that pain. This is incredible. Turning onto Kick his back to the was face. his only escape. These fans firmly behind the big boy, Ryan Rivers, as he, I don't know where he's getting this from, because most men would be done for. To be able to lift another man up with that kind of back damage. Mr. Thompson seems like he thinks he's in control, but is not. Huge knee to the chin of Mr. Thompson. Oh, here we go. I could end him at attention. Oh, huge Overhead, double, double hand chop. No protection for Mr. Thompson on that one. Ryan Rivers just reeling from all of those attacks on the back. Mr. Thompson cannot see. Takes the shirt off, throws it at the referee. Double A! Uh, Spy, Farouk Spine Buster. Absolute amazing Spine Buster. Mr. Thompson showing some fortitude to kick out of the huge lift up Spine Buster. This match has been absolutely phenomenal, Dom. I, 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 I normally have lots of words, but I have none at this point. Ryan Rivers fighting through that pain. Mr. Thompson smart enough to attack his back. Fans firmly behind Ryan Rivers. I mean, Chanting these, big boy. These fans have seen an absolutely incredible show tonight. We still have some of our main event to go. I can see handprints on the back of Mr. Thompson's back. No hat, no play coming into effect. Not quite. Oh, forearm to the back of the head. Ryan Rivers hooking up the wipeout. Finally lands it. That Has been aiming be for that all night. And that is it. Ryan Rivers retains the Pride Championship. If you were not here to watch this live, you have missed out. The heart shown by Ryan Rivers in this match was incredible. The odds stacked against him, Rogan Cargus, the, the whiteboard attacks from the start, the, the cup getting used, or well, almost getting used. Mr. Thompson taking every shortcut he could to take control, but Ryan Rivers, too tough. Too strong, the big boy retains the Pride Championship. And back-to-back -back main event title defences for Ryan Rivers. He has defended that Pride Championship at the past two ESPW shows. Getting his hand raised here by Christian Hayes. He had to dig deep, deep, deep against, and I kind of hate to say, a very, very impressive Mr. Thompson who tried everything, but your Pride Champion is Ryan Rivers. He is still the ESPW Pride Champion. He well, hold on a minute, oh, hold on, on a minute. Hang on, hang on, we're not done yet. Here we're comes our done. number one contender. It's Jordan Bishop. Jordan Bishop. We have seen so much happen this evening. Defeated Noah Green earlier in the evening. He is the number one contender. Coming face to face with Ryan Rivers. What is going to happen? Ryan 
Looks like Jordan Bishop is signalling. Brian Rivers says, not in three weeks, not on April 27, right now. Jordan Bishop making a decision. Jordan Bishop making a wise decision here. He's told Brian Rivers he will see him in three weeks, April 27, ESPW for the ESPW Pride Champion. Jordan Bishop has laid down the challenge. We know when this match will take place in just three weeks' time. Ryan Rivers versus Jordan Bishop for the ESPW Pride Championship. I cannot wait. All these people here tonight, I hope you buy your tickets because after the performances we have seen tonight, I am putting money down. It's going to be a sellout. We're going to have a packed house here at the next event, High Stakes. ESPW, School of Pro Wrestling, 27th of April.